It's time for Wise Money with Corhorn Financial Group with financial advisors Kevin Corhorn, Mike Bernard, and Josh Gregory. Welcome to another episode of Wise Money with Corhorn Financial Group, where every week we're helping you take your next wise step in your financial life. Hey, thanks for being with us. My name is Mike Bernard. I am your host. I'm also one of the CFPs on the show. With me in the KFG studios, CFP Josh Gregory and CFP CPA Ryan Fair back with us again. Yeah, glad to have you, Ryan. Thank you. Thank you. Well, what do you need to be on the lookout for as you get your taxes done this year? We don't have the issue like we did a year ago about dealing with all those new tax law changes. But there are several items that you need to be aware of and confident in as you prepare your taxes this year. So we're going to be welcoming back Ryan Fair, CPA, as we said, to the program. And uh, hopefully he'll give some great help and also answer your questions on today's show. That's right. Speaking of questions, we've got a question bank full of them. So if you've submitted questions recently, uh, we do have a little bit of backlog, but we've got some great tax questions that we're going to be hitting. Uh, we'd love to hear your questions. If you have needs or tax questions or whatever, we want to hear from you. You can reach out to us a few different ways. Call or text us, 574-222-2000. That's 574-222-2000. Online, wisemoneyradio.com. There's a spot for questions right there on the right. And then wherever you're at in social media, we're there too, and you can submit questions there as well. So whether that's Instagram or Facebook or Twitter or whatever, uh, the YouTube channel, just search The Wise Money Show, submit questions that way. All right, Ryan. Yes, how sir. You, how you feeling? I mean, we are on the cusp of tax season, right? It's right. It's happening. It's happening, man. I am... Calm, cool, and collected <laughs> <Yeah>. so far. <laughs> so far. That's good. How well, many cups of coffee have you had so far this morning? I'm on number 13 so far. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, but uh, but yeah, we, we're on the cusp of, of a great tax season. We've yep. got a full team. Um, the team at KFG, so we have we, we help people with all sorts of stuff, but our specialty is connecting all those things together right. into one plan. But your ta- our tax team... We're going to do 25, 26, 2700 returns this year, yeah. somewhere in that range. Yeah, and so we're we're starting. So so even now we've got a lot of business tax returns that are already completed. So as soon as the first of the year happens, we start working on tax returns for uh, our our small business clients. So that's S corps, partnerships. We've got a ton of those done already, which is which is a good jump start. Mm-hmm. So. Maybe wonder what else we're doing this time of year in our department. We're busy wrapping up all of those financial statements for our small business clients so that we can then prepare the tax returns. So that's what our accounting team is. They're they're burning the midnight oil now also. Mm-hmm. And then payroll. Payroll is humming in, in the KFG empire this time of year. So obviously everybody that receives a paycheck knows that after the first of the year, they're expecting their W-2. That's what we're doing right now. We're putting the finishing touches on all the W-2s for all of our business clients that we do payroll for, getting those sent out to the to the employees so that they can then start working on their tax returns. That's right. So it's a it's a full well-oiled machine going on right now, but very busy already and busier to come. But I mean, it's fun. We we love it. It's busy, but yep. I mean, we get to see a whole bunch of people right in just a small short of time, short amount of time. So. Yep. Um, all right, so we had the big tax law changes that took place in 2018, and that created a big stir when you got your taxes done, and you know things were different. The, pay, the forms looked different. Yeah. Well, we don't have that for 2019. The forms we do. Uh, oh well, this is the thing. Uh-huh, so, uh-huh. so um, I guess Ryan, and then Josh, I want you to share as well. I mean, what's the number one thing you're telling people to be on the lookout for? Maybe, maybe I should be on the lookout for different forms. Yeah. So we'll, we'll just hit the the forms real quick. So, if you remember looking at your 2018 tax returns, they did look entirely different. They, terrible. Actually. Terrible. I, yeah. I they really disliked it. Right. They weren't helpful at all. Um, there was very little information on the 1040. And instead, Congress made six new schedules that all of the information went on so that they could basically say that they condensed the 1040 to a half page. And then there was <laughs> exactly. a bunch of blank half they, pages. They threw a grenade in there, blew the whole thing up, scattered lots of existing lines to different pages, right. and all in the effort of simplifying, right? Right. That's, That's how Congress, Congress does works. best. That's okay, right. so what's going on? So, so yeah, they, they kind of reverted back it kind of merged the the 2017 forms with the 2018 forms and so they put a lot of the 
primary lines back on the 1040 so that you can actually look at your 1040 and, you know, tell when up from down. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, so good. so they did take a step back and make it a little more user friendly. So Okay. Yeah, so, so that's, that's good. one thing to be on the lookout for. Yeah, not a big deal, but we still every year we still deal with withholding problems with with taxpayers. Yeah. You know, is something, you know, when you start a new job or if you, you know, get that notice at the end of the year that you can change your withholdings, kind of blow it off because that seems like, you know, one of the easiest things like, oh, yeah, they just withhold the taxes from my paycheck and I'm good to go. Well, a lot of people do think, and, and I'm not poking anyone in the eye, but do think that the withholding of the taxes is paying the tax. Right. But no, they're just setting it aside. You actually calculate how much your tax is supposed to be on your return. And it's when they're not withholding the right amount. Right. That you get in trouble. Right. And we see examples every year, uh, lots of them actually, where, you know, people just get blindsided with having the incorrect withholdings taken out of their paychecks each, each year. And then it's up to us to tell them, oh, yeah, you're short. You need to write a big check to pay last year's taxes. What an awful feeling to right. be the deliverer of that bad news, too. Well, right. Or the receiver. By well, yeah. That's pretty <laughs> awful, too. I'd much rather be the deliverer than the <laughs> yeah. receiver. But um, So the most common cause for these problems are if there's multiple jobs, multiple employers at, uh, in the family, even as you know, between husband and wife, if there's multiple jobs, a lot of times they don't get the withholdings on the on the same page. If one spouse makes, uh, you know, significantly more than the other, then you know, if you're just filling out your W four as oh, I'm married with a couple of exemptions, yep. they under withhold. Um, the IRS actually is aware of this and has made some good steps in trying to resolve it. They did um, release a new withholding calculator on their website that is actually pretty comprehensive. It's It's been very helpful from the ones that I've seen with clients. And helpful for us nerds. Well, yeah. For the common taxpayer, yeah. it seems a little... Yes, but it does ask the right questions at least. Of, okay. Are okay. there, you know, are there multiple jobs? You know, it does take into account even uh, some of the self-employment tax issues that we see oh, with, wow, okay. you know, if somebody's working a side job with no withholdings. And so it is a lot more helpful. There's, it, it's pretty comprehensive where there are a lot of questions to answer as opposed to just how many people are in the household? Okay, so, we're done. So if, you're, if your withholdings weren't quite, if your result of refund right. or owing wasn't quite right a year ago and you never fixed your withholdings, watch out. Yep. If you changed employers, yep. hopefully you did a tax projection during the year. If not, watch out. If your employer changed payroll companies, yeah. yep which uh, happened a lot this past year because of some stuff mm -hmm. going on in Michigan. Or I'll add another one. If your employer was acquired by another firm, yep. sometimes, I mean, that kind of falls under a change in the payroll department, but uh, you, you may be working for a company now that is based outside of your home state of Indiana right. or Michigan or wherever yep. you live. And that's where we see the most commonly local tax issues oh, right, not right, right. being withheld yep. properly. You know, they're not withholding for the right county or the right state and uh, can get you into trouble. I got another one where withholdings can be, can be you know, kind of messy. If you started a new income stream, you know, it's not many of you, but a pension. I had a client start a pension. They retired from teaching, started their pension in August. We, I helped her fill out the pension paperwork and we said withhold at married zero rates. And this was no small pension, a couple grand a month. They withheld ten ten dollars a month. What? They Whoa. withheld ten dollars a month on two thousand dollars of income per month. Hmm. Filing married zero. How does well, that even? That's happen? crazy. This is crazy. Oops. So wow. you, so anyway, but we did projections. We were prepared for it. So right. No, no and at surprise. the end of the day, you can be really angry at your pension company or your employer or payroll company. At the end of the day, it's our responsibility or your responsibility. If you're getting a paycheck, you have to. You have to check it out. This is why we're such big advocates of tax planning, that even though, you know, taxes are not fun to think about all the time. And yeah, they are. We, <laughs> <laughs> and and it, it, for many people, it feels like an event. No, no, no. It should be a process throughout the year, the planning that you're evaluating your situation. One more thing here before we, uh, we pause. Um, withholdings, if you're self-employed or you've got a side hustle that's um, self-employed income, you really need to be on top of the, mm -hmm. the estimated payments, mm -hmm. right? And if you think you're going to need to extend, you might want to extend with a payment. So there's a lot more 
things that you need to be aware of as you're about to prepare this year's return. So we've got that and then a bunch of great tax questions still to come here on the Wise Money Show with Corhorn Financial Group. All right, YouTube, thanks for being with us today. This is the Wise Money Show. You're on the Wise Money Channel. If you're not already a subscriber, I'd encourage you to do that. Hit that uh, bell below um, and make sure that bell is turned on for notifications so that you're updated every time we drop a new episode, which is every Saturday morning. But then you're also updated with all of the other videos that we do, Next Wise Steps, and then any announcements as well. So leave comments below. We'd love to hear from you. Hit that thumbs up, thumbs down. Tell me if you like Ryan's haircut or not. Uh, uh, shaggy. <laughs> Don't even look at my hair. I need a so, haircut so bad right uh, now. Yeah. So, all right. Thanks for being with us. Okay. So we barely scratched the surface yeah. there. Yeah. Um, wildest underpayment, overpayment story. I've got a good one. Okay. But while you, Okay. I'll share it yeah. while you think of it. I've shared it on the show before, but a um, friend of mine who uh, went to high school with, graduated from Michigan State with as well. Um, he was an accounting mm -hmm. major, mm -hmm. and he didn't have his CPA yet, but he was working towards his CPA and went and worked in Chicago for one of the big four accounting firms and graduated from Michigan State, started working in May, and goes to do his taxes the next February, and he owes thousands of dollars. This really? first his first real tax return, and he grew up, you know, not very well off, and and so this is a big deal. It owes thousands of dollars, and he's like, "What happened? Yeah, they never withheld federal taxes. None, none. Wow, Sounds like zero. Michigan State grad. <laughs> <laughs> no, like his company, which is a big yeah. name, you know, that sounds like a big black bird that flies around, um, <laughs> and. Uh, <laughs> Raven, it's not Raven. Yeah. Um, and uh, they just, because he filled out his forms correctly, he just never looked at his pay stubs. Right. He never did tax planning, just assumed it was being taken care of. I, which, I mean, that can happen in any field, though, right? I mean, the, the old saying, cobbler's kid who has right. no shoes. Right. Uh, it, it's part of the reason why, no matter who you are, it's important to have extra set of eyes. Yeah. A financial planner could have caught that for him going through the the six areas of financial planning, or if he had run his own tax projection, all that's important. But You do your own projection? I, I do, yeah. You? I do. have, yeah. yeah. I do as well. So I think I do, if you're listening and trying to, and you're not doing, and you're not doing comprehensive financial planning, which we call one plan, and you're thinking, well, how do I do this? I, I think I do my first projection probably August. I got to get past the midway point and mm -hmm. start, mm -hmm. you know, I guess get a little bit more clarity. I'll do it maybe in August and then in November or so. I, I do the projection just to make sure I'm got plenty of margin of error. Ryan makes fun of me actually, because I, I get do. too large of refunds back. Yeah. I just, it's an emotional thing. I hate the thought of writing a check to the government. That just, oh, you are gonna that get would wreck my day. Will you light this guy up here on YouTube yeah. in the comments below, I just know. light him up. It's so, right. stupid. Being emotional about your, Situation. Uh, Come yeah, on. I know the government is sitting on my money, not paying me any interest, but yeah. Yeah. neither my, are the banks. My, so. <laughs> yeah, and my credit union is doing the same thing, right? All right. So let's share. I've got at least one. Let's share at least one more. And then um, for each of us, things to be. Yeah, just watch out for. Of, watch things out. to be aware of. And then we'll talk <laughs> about. A um, the, you know, you can do it yourself. You can go to a chain. So, and then I heard my breathing a little bit. And when I looked over at you, we were back to this. I, I, yeah, I like I to get right up I to know. the mic so, but, so you can hear my breathing. So I think the sweet spot that I found is if you're like this, yeah, about there. Because it, oh. it's going to catch – it's going to – it's it'll catch your your voice. And so the temptation is to lean in. All right. We ready? Right, let's go. What do you need to be on the lookout for? as we enter tax season, as you start looking at getting your tax return done. That's what we're talking about today. This is the Wise Money Show with Corhorn Financial Group. Thanks for being with us. My name is Mike Bernard. Here with me in the KFG studios, Josh Gregory and special guest CPA, Ryan Fair. 
To stay up to date on all Wise Money content, you can do so a couple different ways. Online, wisemoneyradio.com is how you find us. And then wherever you're at in social media, we are there as well. And so you can check us out and stay up to date and leave questions there as well. Also want to say thanks to the attorneys at Ledoux, Kern & Keen, also known as South Bank Legal, and First State Bank for making the Wise Money Show possible. All right, before we transition into listener questions, um, we're just talking about, hey, what do you need to be aware of when you're going to get your return done this year? Ryan said forms are going to look a little bit different. And then we all said continue to watch out for the horror stories of miswithholding. So under withholding or like Josh, way over withholding. Um, <laughs> so, so be on the lookout of that. What else do you need to be on the lookout for as you're doing your tax return this year? Yeah, I don't know if it's a lookout thing, but it's definitely um, a discussion point with many of our small business clients talking about all the depreciation options that you have uh, available when you're doing your taxes. So everybody knows depreciation. Uh, no, not everybody knows. So let's <laughs> tell everybody so they know. Uh, depreciation is when you buy a an expensive piece of equipment that has a long, useful life. You know, typically it will last a number of years. So you can think of machinery or equipment or buildings. Vehicles. And, yeah, vehicles. Any equipment that's used for the business that has a long-term useful life. And instead of automatically just expensing that or writing it off in the year of purchase, you can depreciate it, which means write off a chunk of it each year. And the government has all kinds of confusing uh, scenarios of when stuff gets depreciated, how many years it gets depreciated over, you know, there's lots of options. On top of the regular, what we call the regular depreciation, it's makers, which is modified accelerated cost recovery system. And in addition to that, that's where you just spread it out over a number of years and write it off. The, they've given us a lot of options as far as special depreciation, which is also known as bonus depreciation. Where you take it faster, it right, accelerates right. how you get to write those off. So with the new tax law, the automatic bonus depreciation is you write off 100% of it right up front wow. in the year of purchase. And if you, you have to actually elect out of that special depreciation if you don't want to write it all off, there's you know, certain, certain phase outs and limits, but you can even take a loss as a result of that bonus depreciation. I, I like how you frame that as a discussion point with, uh, with small business owners, with clients. There are many people right now who get to make some decisions about how you're going to uh, treat the tax effect mm -hmm. of decisions you already made last year. Right. So, you know, purchasing that new machine or, or new system of some kind, are you going to take it all in one, one year? Or are you going to spread it out over time? And really, this is where your tax planning has to take a multi-year approach. Right. You, you have to be thinking down the road, okay, if I take it all now, then that means I don't have anything to use in the future. Is that going to whipsaw my tax picture? Is there something special about this particular year that maybe it's a higher income year and I, I would really value that bigger write-off right now? Yep. Maybe, maybe you're on pace already here just a month or two into the year. Um, maybe you already know that next year is going to be awesome on the tax return. Yeah. So I, uh, I, it's the closest I ever came to cutting someone off on the show. It'd be too much talk about depreciation, and <laughs> <laughs> but at least you ended with a punchline like, "Hey, it's different this year." Okay, yeah. so here's one thing I'd tell you to be to to watch out for. If you've heard about this cool strategy called the backdoor Roth IRA, you thought it applied to you, or maybe parts of it did, and you said, "I'm doing it." <clears throat> and if you already had pre-tax money in your IRA, you watch out for that. For I, sure. And I've actually, we, we did some Wise Money Minutes on this. We've talked about it on the show before. I just had several people in the fall of last year talk to me about, hey, I just did this backdoor Roth IRA. Well, you think it's a good move? And it, we're not doing one plan with them. We're not doing comp comprehensive financial planning. So I would just ask them and they're like, oh yeah, I've got an IRA. Mm. Oh, if you did, then when you converted that that contribution you actually are going to have to pay tax Excellent. on the money that you converted. So you got to watch out for that one. You know what? I actually had a story um, very similar to that one. Brand new client who has been contributing to an IRA over the years, but they were not eligible to take a tax write-off for those contributions. Mm -hmm. Okay? Because a lot of people don't realize this. Anyone can contribute to an IRA as long as they have earned income, wages in other words. If you've got a paycheck, you could contribute to an IRA. Bill Gates or Warren Buffett could throw money into an IRA if they want to. 
Not everybody gets to take a tax write-off for it, though. So on your tax return, many people, if your income stays low enough, you do get a deduction for that contribution. If not, the money still goes into an IRA. It's just considered already taxed money in that IRA. And as it grows, it's growing without being taxed. But someday you will pay tax on the growth. Okay? Compare that to, it sounds a lot like a Roth IRA contribution, doesn't it? When you contribute to a Roth IRA, you're doing it with money that's already been taxed. But the difference is the growth accumulates over the years without ever being taxed at the end when you start spending it. And so this particular client, they thought they were contributing to an IRA. They prepared their own taxes. They used TurboTax. TurboTax asked them if they contributed. They just didn't know how to be able to look at the tax return and see if they're getting a benefit for this. And we showed them, actually, you've got a lot of money that's built up in this IRA. It's already been taxed we could actually convert that into a Roth IRA and you'd pay very little in, in that transaction. Mm-hmm. So I, I think, you know, anytime we talk about tax preparation, we're always trying to give a warning to make sure that you don't have surprises um, w- when you're putting the tax return together. But we're also always trying to give you a warning to not settle on just preparing your returns. You need to take a planful approach to this. Yeah. Make sure that you're being proactive and thinking ahead to to the coming year. That that's a great segue. Oh, go uh, ahead. I was going to say another reminder related to that is that the conversion or recharacterization stuff. The IRS changed all the rules on that a couple of years ago, also. So you can't undo some of those. Uh, conversions yep. like you used to be able to. So that is a yep. reason you have to do tax planning. You can't just undo it at the end if yep. once you figure it out it's wrong. Well said. Yeah. Well said. You know, in the spirit of surprises that could happen, um, one of the things that we are often looking for each time we examine someone's tax return is how is how is this tax return we're looking at? So looking at your 2019 return, how's it going to be different in 2020? And one of the places that sometimes families get caught off guard is when children reach age 17. They don't realize that all of a sudden you go from getting a $2,000 child tax credit to now maybe getting $500 for that child. Maybe. A $1,500 swing. Just of because real they, dollars, not right. a not a fifteen hundred dollar like deduction swing. No yeah. real dollars. Fifteen hundred less in refund, or you now owe fifteen hundred more. Some some sort of legitimate fifteen hundred dollar swing on the tax return, just because your child turns seventeen. Don't don't miss that. Right. Mm-hmm. Just uh, sometimes we think each year is going to look a lot like the year before, and there are some meaningful milestones along the way in your family's life, certain ages and whatnot, that can cause last year to be very different than what this year is going to be. Okay. So maybe maybe the last thing that you should be on the lookout for as you're doing this year's tax return is if you're, if you're saying, I'm in the program where I'm maxing out my HSA or maxing out my IRA or Roth or my 401k, be on the lookout, be aware that contribution limits for the most part went up for 2020. So even though we're talking about your your 2019 return, be aware of what the new limits are for 2020. Ryan, can you hit those real quick? Sure can. For IRAs or Roth IRAs, the uh, contribution limits actually stayed the same for yep. IRAs and Roth IRAs. So you can do 6000 if you're under age 50 and plus an extra 1000 for catch-up if you're over age 50. Your 401k and 403b limits did increase. So if you're under 50, they went from 19000 up to 19500 and then if you're over age 50, went from 25000 to 26000 And real quick, simple IRAs, we have a lot of clients with those as well. Contributions went from 13000 to 13500 for uh, anyone under age 50. And with the catch-up, they could, if you're over age 50, it went from 16000 to 16500 HSA went yeah. uh, up $50 for an individual and $100 for family coverage. So... 3550 or 7100. All right, we've got tax questions coming up so that you've got clarity as you're going into this tax season. So that and more coming up here on the Wise Money Show with Corhorn Financial Group. All right. Do we do we scrap I think this next question 
that I have in the outline would probably take a full segment. Yeah. Do we keep it or what scrap it? What is the it? next question? I haven't uh, really even looked you've at this. You've got, you know, when you're going to do your return, you can do it yourself. Oh. You can go to a chain or you can go to CPA. I like drawing that distinction. I like doing that right at the beginning of tax season. Yeah, I do too. So should we do it? Sure. I think we should do it and just maybe condense it so it's not the whole segment. Okay. But. I'm good with that. Yeah, and I was teasing about yanking you on the uh, depreciation, but oh, I'm, no, listening, I'm listening. I'm like, he's still ta- oh, he's still really? talking about depreciation. <laughs> and, <laughs> no. then, and then you were like, okay, and then here's the news. And it's like, okay. Well, you think about helpful. farmers, small business owners, sure. uh, self-employed individuals. Oh, I, it, it could affect a lot of people. Oh, absolutely. Uh, and then there's just some nerdy listeners that like to learn more. Yeah, so. somebody got excited. Uh, yeah. So, somewhere. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> All right, well, let's get into a third segment here. We'll start with that question. And then when if we get into listener questions, you want to hit Emily's first, way at the bottom, second page. Let's do that. Once we get into listener questions, we'll hit Emily's first, which is at the bottom. Talking okay. about HSA. So. All right, ready? Can you refund yourself from your HSA for a medical expense already incurred? Great, great question from a fan of the show. We're going to hit that in just a few minutes. This is the Wise Money Show with Corhorn Financial Group. Thanks for being with us. My name is Mike. Here with me in the KFG studios, Josh Gregory and CFP CPA Ryan Fair. Thank you to Bethel University Adult and Graduate Studies, as well as Diane Bennett and her Inspired Homes team for making the Wise Money Show possible. Also, if you're not watching the show on the YouTube channel or if you're listening on the radio right now, but you spend a lot of time on YouTube, check us out. Just search Wise Money Show on YouTube and I'd subscribe to it and I'd uh, I'd turn that bell on because not only is every episode of the Wise Money Show airing there, we also have other videos that we publish every single month, Next Wise Steps and other things that you're going to want to catch up on. So, um, So find us there, Wise Money Show on YouTube. All right. Tax season is right, right is happening right now. We are on the cusp, and I know that you guys you have a few different options when you're trying to get your tax return done. I'm not talking about tax planning. Tax planning you do with your certified financial planner throughout the year, hopefully in a one plan process where they're working with your CPA, right? But to just get your taxes done, you've got a few different options. You can do it yourself. You can go to a chain. H&R Block, that sort of thing, or you can go to a CPA. And let's just look right at the elephant in the room. And I mean, those are your choices, pros and cons of each. Yeah. I mean, I think I can start this. And of course, I'm generalizing here too. So uh, when I talk about the certain levels of, of skill and expertise, uh, I think it's fun to look at, when I look at a professional tax preparer, CPA, I think of someone that is on staff, available, all year round. They're available all year round for your questions. Um, They are, you know, they've done all of the continuing education. We've done, you know, as a CPA, we have to do 120 hours of CPE every three-year cycle. So that's 40 per year year of continuing ed is the the minimum. Um, Of course, there are CPAs that I hear complaints about around town or around the country. Mm -hmm. Doesn't mean that every professional is amazing. Um, but it sure does mean that your chances of getting things right are are higher. Yeah, you're held to a higher standard right. by a, a board of standards right. of sort, right? Yep, mm-hmm. absolutely. Compare that with the a lot of the chains uh, that pop up around tax season. The the H and R blocks was the example. Or yeah, very well known companies, right. big brands. They spend a lot of money on advertisement, right. so you're familiar with them. But yep. but there's not. It's not a CPA doing right. the return. Yeah, it's not a CPA. It is. Um, you know, typically again, I'm generalizing, but they're typically seasonal people that are hired and go through um, some sort of an education class put on by by the chain. I would I would rephrase that a little bit a, a brief training course. Brief training course. Yeah. Yeah. Very very brief. Get the basics down. Understand their software and how to use it and put the stuff in the right you know answer the right questions. Um, so when I look at the skill levels or expertise, I I kind of generally say they have you know three or four months of expertise 
that they you know that they do their craft throughout the year and then compare that even with the with yourself if you're saying hey I'm going to do TurboTax this year you've got one or two days of expertise <laughs> as far as your uh, your skill level here you're hoping so, for one or two hours of expertise well, right. maybe right but but you're relying on the expertise of the of the developers of that system and right. and the biggest flaw that I've seen with that system Josh already sort of mentioned it is is you go through that and it just asks you a couple questions and you just answer either what with what you think happened or just answer the question at a surface but then you never really can see the return and how right. it impacts. And so, and, and then even then, you know, going back to the skill level, your familiarity, even if you were looking at the return, you might not 100% know exactly where things are supposed to be and what, what right. it all means. So, yep. Yeah. And eventually, TurboTax will burn you out with the number of questions too. Or I hear this at least from other clients that come in. They, they ask so many questions that they just kind of throw in the towel eventually and, uh, you know, just start guessing and seeing what they can do to get to the end. Every year there's a handful of people that come in to, they have thrown in the towel, right. as you said. It's great. They were maybe three-fourths of the way done with TurboTax, and then they stopped and said, okay, I'm going to find a professional here. Yep. Yeah, so. it's great. And then it makes me feel, you know, really proud of myself when I, you know, meet <laughs> with them and they're back out the door in, you know, less than an hour. They're completed return and signed, e-filed. Yeah. You know, it's it's fun. You you mentioned I would just point out a couple things. Number one, you mentioned um, that year round a CPA and a CPA firm is going to offer year round service and availability, mm-hmm. right? As mm-hmm. if you get one of those love letters from the IRS, and um, and then I'd also mention that you know the the the, the self prepared TurboTax or whatever self prepared tax process is is really is really a I would call it a counterfeit solution to a real problem. Hmm. Your real problem is you want to pay the least amount of tax over your lifetime. And a turbo tax, or I'd even argue a chain, it gets your taxes completed so you're compliant, but it doesn't help you with that problem. Hmm. So it's not a real solution. It's a counterfeit solution to the real problem of I want to pay the least amount of tax over my lifetime. And so CPAs might not even offer that full solution either. You need your CPA and your financial planner working together to, to solve that problem. Oh, and, and there are many great CPAs out there who could offer some solution to the problem you just, just described. Um, they could offer you some advice or recommendations on how you could reduce your overall lifetime tax bill. However, they're not going to do that if the only time you ever see them is for an hour in the spring once a year. And to me, that's part of the reason why I'm never shy about suggesting to every client that I have the privilege of serving, I I suggest to them that they have a professional CPA on their team, so to speak. You need to have a group of professional advisors who are all giving their perspective from their unique point of view, and a CPA is one of them. And I'm also not shy about suggesting that they use a CPA in our office because it's a different experience. And I believe, I I, I think I can say this confidently, that the the advice and the ideas that can come up when your certified financial planner and your CPA can both sit there and examine your tax picture from different angles and collaborate together, the ideas that you can come up with, it's, it's just better. I love being able to walk down the hall and literally just work with Ryan, kind of hover over his shoulder while we're both looking at the same yeah, screen and say, great. "Yeah, <laughs> hover over my shoulder." I, I know I, it's, I'm an intimidating guy, I guess, but but I think about right. all the different cases that we've gotten to work on together. Saying, "Boy, what if we did this differently? What if we made this contribution? What if this this income picture was a little bit different, or we postponed it to next year? What does that do?" And ultimately. The, the benefits are showing up all over the financial plan. It's in all areas of your financial life that we can find tax savings ability. Yeah. And those benefits are for the clients. Yeah. I mean, that's that's right. who benefits that's right. out yeah. of the whole thing. Yeah. That's yeah. awesome. Yeah. It's um, so this isn't an infomercial to KFG, but if, you're, if, you're, if you don't have someone who's preparing your tax return this year or you want to elevate um, that experience, you can find us online, Wise Money Radio. Dot com and you'll find all the link to, to reach out to our team. 
And then whether you like sitting down face to face, just getting the return done, you schedule an appointment with one of our preparers, or if you just like to drop it off and run, we got that too. Or if you want a consult on the beginning, on the front end and the back end, we got that too. So full service. All right. We're going to transition into, we're going to start transitioning into questions here. Emily's 39 from Mishawaka, and she said, hey, I paid for my daughter's braces, just came up, and I just put it on the credit card. And then I and then it occurred to me as I was leaving, I actually could have used my HSA for that. Am I allowed to reimburse myself from my HSA to pay off that credit card? And then I just want to confirm, are braces really an allowable expense? Because it's not really a, a medical expense per se. So let, let's start start that discussion. How would you answer that? Well, the, the first one, I, I think you could um, look at the IRS website and you can see braces are listed. It's part of a, a dental treatment and uh, that is something that you can use both your flexible spending account, if you have that at work, or a health savings account. So, Ryan, do you know all these braces alternatives? Are those also considered, you know, so the Smile Ooh, Direct and all that stuff? Do you know? And I'm not trying to put you on the spot, but. You know, I don't know for sure off the top yeah. of my head. Because those are. Those Some are, of those are more cosmetic, I right? think, yeah, that's. Like teeth whitening is not allowed. It's not an allowable medical expense out of the HSA, for example. Got right. it. Got it. Okay. So I, I, that'd be well, interesting. I lean towards no, but okay. I'll, yeah. All right. So we've got the second part of Emily's question about can you reimburse yourself? I mean, this comes up all the time yep. and then several other great tax questions. So more to come here on the Wise Money Show with Corhorn Financial Group. That's fun. That's good. All right. So we're going to have a shorter break this time. Yep. And um, so let's pick it back up with hers and then and then we'll go <clears throat> and then we'll go up. Do we just go in reverse order just so we stay? Well, get some variety. There's a couple insurance questions in there. I'd rather have it about let's oh, stick I'll with be taxes. Tax. Boring. Psh. Yep. Why boring. would you why would you want to talk about taxes all the time? Who would do that? Wah, wah, wah. All right. Wah, so I'll wah. just popcorn it at you. We'll keep it interesting. So wh- where are you going? Nope. I'm not gonna tell Surprise. you. Surprise. <laughs> <laughs> so we don't even get to all know right. what the question I, is. Because I haven't really That's decided. Great. Yeah. All right. Ready? Thank you so much for being with us today. This is the Wise Money Show with Corhorn Financial Group. My name's Mike Bernard. Here with me in the KFG studios, my business partner and friends, Josh Gregory, and special guest, CPA, CFP, Ryan Fair. If you've missed anything and if you love listening to podcasts uh, like I do, you'll find The Wise Money Show there. Wherever you listen to podcasts, just search The Wise Money Show, and I'd ask you to subscribe to it so you're notified every time we've got a new episode that drops. And then also do me a favor and rate the show and make a comment about it as well. That just helps the show be more um, searchable, findable by other people that are looking for content about wise financial principles. All right, we are into listener questions. We're halfway through a great question from Emily. She's 39 from Mishawaka. Here's what she asked real quick. I just paid for my daughter's braces on my credit card, and then right after that, it occurred to me, I actually could have used my HSA for that. Am I allowed to reimburse myself from my HSA to pay off that credit card? And then just to confirm, are braces an allowable expense for the HSA? We already said yes, braces are. All right, can you reimburse yourself? Yes, sir. Yeah, you you can. Um, You could even, I, I believe, make a contribution to the HSA in this calendar year, maybe there wasn't even a whole lot of money in the HSA. You could make a contribution and you get a tax write-off when you make that contribution. When you pull the money back out, as long as you're using it for qualified medical expenses, and as Mike said in our last segment, we already told Emily, yes, those braces uh, should be a qualified medical expense. So the, the question then is, is it about timing, right? When can you pull the money out? Can you can you reimburse yourself after the fact? Or do, does she need to have spent the money out of the HSA directly to pay for those braces? Good news is you can, you can reimburse yourself. And there's even a strategy out there that says you could reimburse yourself many years down the road as long as you've kept good documentation and receipts on what those, those medical expenses were. So the catch, though, is that the HSA has to have already been open before 
you had the treatment or before the, the medical expense was in, incurred. And the contribution needs to happen when you're eligible to make contributions. Correct. So you can't, you can't hear Josh say, well, you can reimburse yourself way out in the future and throw money into an HSA when you're Correct. not eligible. That's right. Just to reimburse yourself. Thanks for so, clarifying that. That's but, good. But you're talking about a planning point that I think is it's just less intuitive And that is, well, cash flow is such that I don't have a ton of money in my HSA just yet. And I just found out I've got a ton of expense. And so as the year goes on, I'll have the cash flow, but I've got the expense right now. I mean, yeah, you can, we, braces is a good example. We tell people, all right, let's dump this, let's, you know, go ahead and pay for the braces or whatever, however you need to, but then let's make sure we funnel the money that you're going to use into that HSA and then pull it out to either reimburse yourself or to continue to pay the dent. You know, some of the braces have, you get a dental plan, like a, or a payment plan, I mm-hmm. should say. So, all right. You know what? This happens every time. <laughs> I'm going to pick on my wife for a second here. Um, every time she goes to the dentist and pays for a dental cleaning or x-rays or something like that, as she's checking out, I get a text, hey, I can use the HSA for this, right? <laughs> and of course, I never respond fast enough. And just to be safe, because she knows that there's a 20% penalty. If you use the HSA for something other than <laughs> qualified. So I've kind of scared her, I think. And and she's always hesitant to use the HSA. And um, so she just uses the the family credit card. Mm. And um, and then, then it's an apology. I, I think I could have used the HSA, but I used the regular credit card. And I'm, I'm always quick to remind her, no, we can just reimburse ourselves if we want to out of the HSA after the fact. That's exactly the situation that Emily was describing here in this question. It's just it's just more work for your husband though, Andrew. So <laughs> I, th- I think this is, a, right. this is a this is a yeah. All right, next question here is from a uh, fan of the show Tracy49 from New Carlisle. Hey, do I get a tax benefit for long-term care insurance that my husband and I just purchased? It is a partnership policy. Huh. Yes, so I can answer that for Tracy Since Tracy's in New Carlisle, that is Indiana, Indiana does have a uh, special deduction on your state income taxes for your long-term care if it is a qualifying partnership policy. So since she stated in here that it is a partnership policy, she lives in Indiana, she can deduct those premiums that she's paying for the... You know what? If I was going to point the finger at something that gets missed on the state tax return more than anything else I ever find. Yep. It's always this this fact, right? That you can write off those long-term care insurance premiums if it is an Indiana partnership plan or a tax qualified plan. And uh, it, it's just one of those things you may not think to tell your CPA about long-term care premiums. Why, why do you need to know about that? Well, mm-hmm. it's because there's a tax write-off for it. We actually ask that question. We yep. ask the question of everyone we prepare the return for. Um, do you know, does does a does an online service like a TurboTax or whatever? Do they ask? Two. I have no idea. I would suspect they don't. Yeah. Did no you, idea. Do you, I, I would suspect that's something that that would be missed. Okay. Let me let me go a little bit deeper. And yeah. again, I'm not trying to put you on the spot, but but um, uh, long term care insurance is extremely valuable. I mean, that is it's it's you're transferring an enormous risk that is very expensive. The premiums aren't so cheap, though, either. Right, right, all right? right, on a relative basis. Now it's about value, so you yep. and you got to make a great decision for your specific financial life. But those premiums are going up. Are you allowed to deduct the full premium on your state return? Because I believe on your federal return there is a limit, right? Yeah, based, based on, on your age. age. That's yeah. right. Yeah, mm-hmm. and you're writing it off in the medical expenses right. of your Schedule A. So you may or may not get really any benefit on the federal side. Right. But on the state side, you get to write all of it. What Good about point. self-employed, Ryan? Ooh, Tell us. Fancy. Yeah. Self-employed health insurance deduction, long-term care can can qualify there. It, it can. You're right. It's so a big yeah, deal. On a schedule, deal. schedule C, right? Yeah. Well, it shows or up on the front four page. Four people who, who file a Schedule right. C. Mm-hmm. Yep. So if you're retired and you've always thought about starting your own business... Uh, there it's you good go. Time for it, right? Yeah. Right. Yeah. All right. So speaking of retired, starting something. Uh, um, Troy's forty-three from Elkhart, and we'll try to sneak this one in here. In twenty eighteen, I started having some side income that uh, is paid to me via uh, a ten ninety-nine. 
I was <laughs> shocked last year how much tax I had to pay on that side hustle. <laughs> yes, Troy. What options do I have to lessen the tax on that income? Well, first, let's start by describing what the tax hit was that got Troy's attention. Uh, so when you are making side hustle income like this and paid via 1099, or even if you don't receive a 1099, of course, that still income counts. still is supposed That's to be right. reported. Uh, so anyways, you're considered self-employed at that point. And so any profit that you have at the end of the year, so that's income less all of your expenses directly related to the production of that income, uh, any profit that you have is taxed as ordinary income, just like any other income that shows up on your tax return is for federal, state, and local taxes. But then you also get hit with something called self-employment tax. So for W-2 employees like us in the room, every paycheck that you you receive, you see FICA or Social Security and Medicare taxes be taken out of every paycheck. That four letter F word. Yeah, <laughs> that is, <laughs> yes, that's what I think of too. But it, <laughs> if you do the math on it, it ends up being 7.65% that comes out of your paycheck for Social Security and Medicare. You never see it as, your, as the employee, but your employer is also matching that and paying another 7.65%. 15.3% total between Social Security and Medicare. When you are self-employed, you get to pay both halves of Social Security and Medicare, and it all needs paid in either through estimates or through when Troy paid it at the end when he was doing his taxes. It, well, and, and it just underscores why it's so important if you do have that side hustle to, be, to become a fantastic uh accountant in a way, you know, a bookkeeper that keeps track of all the medical expenses that are applying to that business, because not only is it reducing the expense or the, the profit at the end of the year, but it's saving you federal tax and the self-employment tax. Yep. It's kind of a double whammy. And ultimately, it saves you state income tax yep. as well. So this is where your depreciation, that geeky stuff, Ryan, yep. I, uh, Ryan talked about earlier, that's really important. Getting all your deductions, uh, claiming vehicle expenses, yep. that's a big important one. So if you're trying to lessen that load, Troy, make sure you're capturing all those and working with the CPA. Outside of that, there's not much you can do to 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 eliminate self-employment tax, but you can save on some taxes by funding a retirement account and yep. HSAs and those sorts of things. So, all right, Ryan, thanks for being with us. We're going to have Ryan back on the show in about a month or so. Give us a midway checkpoint on tax season. But that's all the time we have for today. On behalf of Ryan Fair, Josh Gregory, myself, and all of us at KFG, have a great weekend. We'll see you next Saturday for Wise Money with Corhorn Financial Group. Securities offered through Silver Oak Securities, member FINRA slash SIPC. Advisory services offered through KFG Wealth Management, LLC. Joint business has Corhorn Financial Group. KFG Wealth Management, LLC and Silver Oak Securities Incorporated companies are unaffiliated.